In this lab exercise, you will learn how to create your Google storage bucket on cloud and then import the data from that bucket to the BigQuery. Go to the sidebar for searching the option in Google Cloud Platform Services. Under the storage option, you will find a storage dropdown. Click on it and you will be redirected on a different page. Here you will see how to create and import data from Google Bucket. For creating a bucket, click on the Create Bucket. Then you choose a bucket ID for your project. This is similar to the project ID we named. As it must be unique, let me choose the name as bq-bucket-1. Or it can be any name of your choice. As we are using Google Cloud Storage, you have the option to copy your data to multiple locations or to copy your data in a single location. It all depends on you. The result is the cost. Selecting a multi-region will cost more as compared to a single location. So let's opt for a multi-region. In a multi-regions, here you can see that the data is stored in multiple locations. Like in the Americas, it sets multiple regions in the United States. And similarly, if you opt for the Europe region, when selecting it, it will store or you can say it will backup data at multiple locations in Europe. So you can learn more about this here. And you can see that there are more details here about the key concept of bucket location. Okay, so let's move further. We will go with the multi-region option. Next is the selection for the storage class. We are okay with the standard option and now the access control option. There are two types of control to this. Either you want to go for fully secure access such that it has many restrictions or you want to have a lower security level access. Now, it depends on what type of data you are storing. If your data is very much confidential, you would obviously like to go for the fine-grained option. And if it is not too much confidentiality, like a public data set, you can go with the uniform level. Next comes the advanced setting for the encryption. For this, we will simply go with the Google's own option managed key as it, it will automatically cater for the needs. Finally, we create the bucket. Now the bucket is created. This is the main window where you are redirected after bucket creation. Here we will upload the files to the bucket and after uploading the files, we will export the data to BigQuery for analysis. Let's upload the file to the bucket. The same 50,000 sales record file Point to remember here is that the file is being uploaded to the bucket ID named bq-bucket-1. The file is now successfully uploaded. It has a file size of 6 MB, saved on this date, and the access level is not public at the moment. You can actually manage it and make it public or whatever you need as per requirement. Right now, by default, it is a not public option because it is a bucket storage. Also here in the permission tab, you can see the public access status. We have created the bucket under the project name My First BigQuery Project. So all this bucket data is being stored and accessible by My First BigQuery Project. Point to notice is that the bucket is not public, but it can be accessed by the owners of my first BigQuery project. Once we are done with uploading the data to the project, we move back to the BigQuery.
So here is the pin option for the QD. Here, this time we will try to upload the data using the bucket. Okay, so this time I will create a different data set retaining our previous data sets here itself. We are going to create a data set. Let me name it as sales record. I want to make it different from previous ones so that you don't get confused. Let's name it sales record detail. Once this data set is created, now we need to move some data into it. So for moving the data into it, we will go to the create table option. You will see the same pop-up window. This time we will go for the Google Cloud Storage option. Then we will browse for the bucket we have just created. Clicking on it, we will see select our file we have uploaded in the bucket. This is the CSV file which is automatically detected. If it does not, you can select it from here. Finally, let's assign a table name to it. Let's say sales record. Selecting the automatic schema, once it's done, we will create the table. When the table is successfully created, you can see it over here. Under the sales record detail, you will find sales record. Let me just show a preview. It contains all the columns and same 50,000 rows we saw previously. So this is how you load the data from the big bucket. And in the future lectures, we will perform the data analysis on this data.